In this video, we'll try to understand the expected value. Suppose that we have 1 million people in a population and would like to know the average body height of these individuals. Since it would be too much work to measure the body height of all the 1 million people in this population, we could instead estimate the population mean by taking a sample of for example 4 individuals from the population and measure their body height. Suppose that these are the body heights of the four individuals in our sample. To compute the sample mean, we sum these values and divide by the sample size, which is 4 in this example. The mean of our sample is 169, which will serve as the best estimate of the population mean height of the 1 million people in this population. To instead calculate the population mean body height, we would need to measure the heights of all individuals in this population and sum the values and divide by the total population size, which is 1 million in this example. We see that the population mean body height is 170 centimeters. This is quite close to our estimated mean body height based on our sample of four individuals. We expect that the sample mean approaches the population mean when the sample size increases. Suppose that we now like to know the mean value of a six-sided die. The problem is that this equation does no longer work because the size of the population is undefined. We can actually roll the die an infinite number of times. We may, however, estimate the mean by rolling the die, for example, four times where we, for example, happen to get these four numbers. The mean of these four numbers is 2.5. But how do we come up with an equation for the expected mean from an infinite number of rows? This is where the equation of the expected value comes in, because this equation does not involve any sample size compared to this equation. To calculate the expected value for this example, we would sum the products from multiplying the possible values on the die with the probabilities to get these values. If we would roll a six-sided die, we might get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or a 6. If the die is fair, there should be an equal probability to get one of the six numbers. The probability of getting a certain number is therefore 1 over 6. If we do the math, we see that the expected value is 3.5. Note that if we roll the die, we should not expect to get the value of 3.5, because 3.5 is not a possible outcome. One can think of the expected value as the value we would get if you compute the mean of a very large number of independent observations of the random variable. For example, let's roll the die. After the first toss, we got a 3. We can show that number in the following plot. Then we roll the die a second time where we happen to get a 1. The mean of these two numbers is 2. Then we roll a 5. The mean of these numbers is 3. Then we roll a 2, which results in a mean value of 2.75. And then we roll a 1, and so forth. If we continue like this, the mean will approach 3.5. If we repeat this process 1000 times, our mean value would, for example, change like this. Although the mean values vary a lot in the beginning, they stabilize at 3.5 after about 500 rows. The expected value of the die is the mean that we approach as the number of tosses increases. We see that this value is 3.5. I will now show you that the weighted mean of a discrete variable is calculated in a similar way as the expected value. If we would calculate the mean of the numbers of a six-sided die, we see that that mean is 3.5. However, note that this equation only works if it is a fair die 
with equal probabilities. If you instead use an unfair die with the following weights that sum up to 12, we see that it is more likely to get a 2 because we will get on average 7 2s out of 12 rows, whereas we expect to get, for example, only 1 4 out of 12 rows. The weighted mean of this die can be calculated like this, where we multiply the weights by the values of each side on the die and divide by the sum of the weights. If we do the math, we see that the weighted average of this die is 2.75, which is lower than the fair die with equal weights, because with this die it is more likely to roll a 2. Suppose that we instead would use the following weights, which now sum up to 1. Then we would still get a mean value of 2.75, because the relative differences between the weights are still the same. Since the denominator is equal to 1, we can simplify the calculations like this. This is how the corresponding expected value is calculated. We see that the two calculations are more or less identical. The main difference is that these weights should be seen as probabilities that must always sum up to 1. Let's have a look at the following uniform distribution which represents the probability of getting a certain side of a six-sided die. For example, the probability of rolling a 5 is 1 over 6, which is about 16.7%, and the probability of getting a 6 is also 1 over 6. So, what is the mean of this distribution? To calculate the mean of a discrete distribution, we can use the formula for the expected value of a discrete random variable, which in this case can take only six possible values. We plug in the possible values that the variable can take, and the probabilities to get these values, and do the math. We see that the mean of this type of a uniform distribution is 3.5. Let's consider this example with the weighted die we used earlier where the probability of getting a 2 was 7 over 12, which is about 58%, whereas the probabilities of getting other sides of the die were 1 over 12. If you plug in the corresponding probabilities for the possible outcomes, we see that the expected value for the mean of this distribution is 2.75. If we would roll this kind of die many times, the mean of such rows will approach 2.75. Remember that this is the formula for the expected value of a discrete random variable. Rolling a die can be seen as a discrete random variable because there is a certain number of possible outcomes that we can get. Now, suppose that we instead would have the following uniform distribution where it is possible to get any value between 1 and 6. For example, one might get the value of 5.437982 and so forth. This type of distribution is therefore called a continuous distribution because it can generate an infinite large number of values. Since the area of any probability distribution should be equal to 1, and we know that the length of this side of the rectangle is equal to 5. The height of this rectangle must be equal to 1 over 5. The expected value of a continuous random variable is calculated like this. To understand this equation, let's cut the distribution into 10 equally spaced pieces where all rectangles have the same width. These values represent the midpoints within the 10 rectangles. This is the function of the uniform distribution. The height of this distribution is equal to 1 over b minus a, where a is the lower limit, whereas b is the upper limit. If we set a to 1 and b to 6, we see that the value of the function when x is between a and b is 1 over 5. 
the function is equal to zero if x is less than one or greater than six. Let's replace f of x with the function of the uniform distribution so that we have the following integral with the limits a and b. This can be seen as we multiply the midpoint in the interval with the height of the corresponding rectangle times its width, which is 0.5 in this example. The area of the rectangle can be seen as the probability to obtain a value in the range of the rectangle. 1 over 5 times 0.5 is 0.1, which corresponds to the area of this rectangle. This means that the probability of getting a value between 1 and 1.5 is 10%. If you plug in the area of the rectangles and their midpoints and sum these products, we see that the expected value is equal to 3.5. Note that, since this formula is used to compute the expected value of a continuous distribution, the width of these rectangles will actually be infinitely small. Instead, one therefore usually tries to find the integral of this function. Since we will integrate with respect to x, we can move this part to the left-hand side of the integral. Like this. The integration of x, or the antiderivative of x, is x to the power of 2 divided by 2, because if we would take the derivative of this, we would get x. Then we plug in the lower and upper limits, simplify, factorize, and cancel. We have therefore shown that the expected value of a continuous uniform distribution is half of a plus b. Let's try to plug in the values of a and b and do the math. We see that the expected value, or the mean, of this continuous uniform distribution is 3.5. This was the end of this video about the expected value. Thanks for watching.